Hello, this is Talking Europe. I'm Catherine Nicholson. Now, regular viewers of the programme will know we often feature a debate between two European politi politicians on this show. But today we're handing the microphone over to some of our viewers. France 24 recently took part in a Europe-wide experiment called Europe Talks. Now, France 24 and 17 other European media between them recruited 12 thousand people from across the continent to be matched up with someone with opposite views on a host of topics from mask wearing to pandemic school openings, the treatment of refugees to car free cities. Now, these debates all took place online in mid-December. You might ask why? Well, the idea is to get us all thinking about breaking out of our own echo chambers. In just a moment, we'll meet two of the brave participants who took on the challenge. But first, here's an explainer by France 24's Europe Talks producer, Céline Schmidt. Every time you click on a link for a newspaper article, a politician or a political party, internet giants like Google and Facebook take note. And they use algorithms to tailor future results just for you, in line with your past preferences. That means you're trapped in your own personal filter bubble with all future results weighted to be in line with what you already like. What you miss out on is objectivity and nuance. You hear only one side of the story and the consequences are far-reaching. In France, 28% of people get their news from social networks, and almost half of under 35 say it's their main source of information. Highlighting stories a site knows will appeal to specific users, generates more clicks and more advertising revenue. But that comes at the expense of more diverse information. Well, we have got two Europe Talks debaters with us today. We have Larissa Schmidt, who's a librarian from southwest Germany, and Pierre Pompilio, an engineer in the oil industry, originally from Brittany in France, but currently working in West Africa. You're both age 26. You're both very enthusiastic debaters. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. yeah, thank you for having us. Well, I want to ask you both first, uh, why did you want to debate with somebody who you knew that you were going to disagree with? Larissa, come to you first. Um, yeah, so I think it's really important to um, like test your opinion every once in a while um, and also to see if you really, yeah, if you really can um, say, say what you want to say to someone who's uh, completely in a different level. So mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it's important and it was quite fun to actually. Uh, and Pierre, did you enjoy the experience? What was your motivation for getting involved? Yeah, well, my I, I did enjoy it a lot. Um, my motivation was to broaden my uh, my reasons, just to try to find out uh, what I could uh, expand, wh what is the opinion of others that I didn't think about at all. And uh, with this experience and this information, what I could have an opinion on that. Uh, I think no. it's uh, very, very important for citizens to... Uh, to, to have these kind of things. Indeed, it's not necessarily something that we do very often these days, uh, of course, in our social media age. Now, uh, one topic that I know that you both had quite big disagreements about was to do with city living and the environment. Now, Larissa, you live in uh, quite an environmentally friendly part of Germany, I think we can say, uh, and you're a keen cyclist. You like to get around town on your bike. Pierre, uh, you are much more uh, car-oriented, we understand. Uh, Larissa, can you just tell us uh, your point of view about this issue, which is such a big issue across Europe? Yeah, so I really think that, um, you know, in the core of cities, you don't need cars because you can get anywhere on your bike or um, by food and there's public transportations. And I really think if we focus there a little bit more, um, we can create a very safe environment where you can move around perfectly without cars, um, which, have, would, which would have such a big impact. Well, car is pretty much main symbol of freedom at some point. I was uh, uh, using a lot of um, uh, transport services and uh, and it was yeah, quite good. But when you use the car for the first time and for a long time then, uh, you take the habit to go from one point to another without any restriction and without being dependent on any services that can fail you. Mm. That's something I'm very, uh, I think is very important. So it's the, for me, it's a debate that, of course, is uh, going uh, around in all Europe, but the, the question is more about uh, the cars themselves than mm. the cars in the city. It's just to uh, reduce the pollution. Mm -hmm. uh, it's to change the cars themselves than uh, just changing maybe the traffic within the, the, the cities. And did uh, debating with Larissa change your point of view at all? Yeah, 
indeed, a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's interesting because on the uh, we are both on the same side uh, of the energy transition. We want a, a change. That's a fact. Uh, but the the what? Yeah, the mm -hmm. the idea they they could they they did say was uh, quite convincing at uh, at this point. Yeah. Okay, Larissa, did uh, did the debate change your point of view at all? Um, a little bit, but um, not in a mess way. But um, I think I really should pay more attention to um, that. Although public transportation may work really well where I live, mm -hmm. um, that may not be the case everywhere. So I think we should really focus on that. Um, and not just we as the people, but mm -hmm. also like um, the government should really do something that one can change without much um, giving up much freedom. Uh, and would you be in favour of more debates of this kind? Yes, definitely, because I think it's really, really great to see, to have someone else's view and to really like step into someone else's shoes, mm -hmm. um, especially because, I mean, I'm quite close to France and still I don't really know how it, the situation is there. So it was really great for me to see that from someone who really lives in it. Well, Pierre and Larissa, I'd like to thank you both so much for coming on, uh, replaying your debate a little bit. Thanks, both of you, for taking part. Well, we want to pick up on that topic of the future of urban living with mayors from two European cities. Well, this is a pretty big topic right now. We have with us on the line uh, Mayor of Strasbourg, Jeanne Barseguian, and Clotilde Darmont, who is Mayor of Bucharest's biggest district, Sector One. Hello to both of you. Hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Now, uh, Jeanne, if I come to you first uh, as a green mayor, uh, we know that uh, you're very much in favour of a lot of the things that we've been discussing with Larissa and Pierre. Uh, I think it was interesting to hear that they're both quite in favour of better public transport, even though Pierre is very attached to his car. Now, uh, do you believe that citizens are getting enough involvement in decision making on these kinds of issues? Cities in France are responsible of 67% uh, of carbon emissions. And so it is a big challenge um, to make our inhabitants uh, participating to uh, this uh, climate uh, issue. And uh, so we, we try in Strasbourg uh, to have a, um, a strong connection between uh, environmental issues and um, participation, democratical issues, mm -hmm. because we think um, without participation from citizens, there is uh, maybe no uh, no acceptance uh, of the decisions. There is uh, maybe no understanding, mm -hmm. and so it's. Uh, very difficult to implement our uh, public uh, policies. So we try uh, as much as possible mm -hmm. to make the participation very uh, dynamic in our city mm -hmm. about ecological issues. Mm -hmm. I can uh, maybe uh, give one example about uh, planting trees um, in the school uh, grounds and uh, we make the, the children uh, plant the trees um, and so it has a, a very uh, positive impact. We have those two issues of um, waste management and air quality. Actually, we have even, uh, we are undertaking infringement procedures, which means that we do not respect the European uh, rules on those aspects. And it is, it is something very important that we need to fight for. Um, the, the society here is getting much more um, involved, more uh, modern people want to have a very occidental way of life. We, we, we have all the assets to become uh, this uh, mm. uh, European capital that we would like, but we have to make some changes. <laughs> One of the changes that we need to make, and this is why it was very interesting for me to uh, hear about uh, this uh, discussion, is about uh, owning a car or bicycling. Because, you know, we have this um, new middle class, finally they can get a car, they can get the car they have wanted all their life. And uh, some of them are saying, no, you know, it's not anymore uh, a car that we should get, it's a, bi it's a bicycle. <laughs> we, need, we should, uh, we should uh, shift faster uh, to the new, um, to this green society that we would like. We are a few years behind, but we, we're trying to, uh, to, uh, 
keep up with, I mean, to be to to change faster than the Occident has been changing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to ask you both about uh, the public debate in the time of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, Jeanne Barseguian, how are you facilitate, facilitating debate uh, during the pandemic? Yeah, we think that uh, democracy um, uh, must um, continue in, in this uh, crisis time. Of course, we are using uh, a lot of uh, digital uh, meetings. Uh, we are organizing, for example, a citizens' convention in, in the metropole of Strasbourg. The first one, the first citizen convention, it's like a, a big forum, uh, was organized um, in, in December about uh, 5G uh, technology mm -hmm. and uh, the digital uh, uses very uh, interesting and I have to say that uh, citizens are participating a lot of uh, citizens are participating to this digital debate. The COVID crisis is not at all a, a crisis for the for uh, citizens participation um, here you Bucharest is one of the most connected connected city in um, in Europe. Even our party was born through uh, Facebook and through social media. For us, social media is uh, basically the way we communicate, the way we debate, the way we, um, we make decisions. Well, there we go. Social media uh, not coming out of this programme so badly after all. Thanks so much uh, to our guests, our two mayors, Jeanne Barseguian and Clotilde Armand, and also, uh, of course, Larissa and Pierre, who we heard from before. And now, maybe we have inspired you, our viewers, to try and break your social media filter bubbles too. Thanks very much for watching. Happy debating and see you soon on France 24.